welcome everybody to our uh, webinar today. Our topic is the smart metering standard wireless Embus. What do I have to know about? What exactly do I have to know about? Our speaker today is my colleague Manfred Schommertz. He's internal support engineer of the division wireless connectivity and sensors. And my name is Regina Fingerhut. I am marketing manager also of the division wireless connectivity and sensors. I will give you some general information about our webinar now. The duration of the presentation will take around 30 minutes and um, you have to uh, you have the chance to ask us some questions uh, during the whole webinar but after that we will also have 50 minutes uh, especially for the questions and um, my colleague Manfred will answer um, not all of them but will give you a selection in these 50 minutes of uh, the ask questions but if we don't have the chance to answer all of them you can also contact us later under the email address isos-webinar at we-online.de um, it would be very great if you um, answer a feedback survey after the webinar so that we can optimize our show and another thing I would like to tell you is um, that you will there will be a recording after the webinar later, so you will um, find a recording under our YouTube channel, Worth Electronic Group, also under our homepage, we-online.com/webinars, and we will um, have it there in there tomorrow. So. Um, you have the chance to get back in. Um, you will be muted during the whole webinar. It's uh, better for us, so uh, there are not so many noises, but you have the chance to ask questions uh, during the whole webinar. Now I will give the word to my colleague Manfred Schommertz. Just one moment, please. Yes, right. Ladies and gentlemen, from my side, a hearty welcome to this afternoon session, our webinar with the topic, the smart metering standard, wireless embus, what do I need to know? Yes, welcome to all the listeners. I would like to briefly give you an overview of what we would like to discuss and talk about this afternoon. And let's have a look. The first one would then be, yes, here we are, the slide containing the contents which we'd like to discuss this afternoon. Not many topics. We'd start off with a short introduction. I'll give you an overview of what this all is about. Then we'll discuss a little bit around about the OMS group, the Open Metering System group. Then it'll become a little bit more technical. We will have a look at the radio frames. We'll have a look at some examples and the application and thereafter i'll give you an overview of our own wireless ember solutions and finally we have the topic prospects which we'd like to just have a little look into what to expect in the future let's have a look the introduction it concerns the electricity water gas meters but also heat cost meters which are found in just about every residential home or small industrial applications to measure various uh, consumptions of water, gas, and electricity. In other words, the smart metering and the IoT are dependent on wireless connectivity simply to get all this data across to a central gateway and control station. In essence, to achieve this, we have either the long range outdoor or an alternative, the short range indoor network to enable the connected home. Let's have a look a little bit in detail. What does this entail? The wireless embus, a wireless protocol for smart metering. In the left bottom, you'll see a meter application which does the reading of the meter you get a certain value of a power consumption in watts or a water consumption in liter, for example. 
And the smart metering device would then have the ability to transmit this information via radio with the wireless MBUS protocol uh, to and or reader a monitor for processing and passing on to a high instance or to the cloud or to a control station further. This is in essence what the wireless MBUS is about. So many meters in the field which could be connected to a central gateway via the wireless MBUS. What is the motivation behind this? Automated recording and processing of meter reading values. In the past, many of these meters had to be read by hand or manually, which was very time consuming. If we can have this automated, obviously it's a great advantage and the wireless MBUS is the solution for this application. It allows detailed profiling of loads and up-to-date values of loads for optimizing energy distribution. This is sometimes very critical for city councils and energy distributors. Uh, they are often in need of a highly dynamic supply network, including the dynamic price structures for load steering under the topic advanced metering infrastructure. Uh, also required within Germany is the uh, security and safety of this data which is transmitted and especially for the gateways which you'll see on the right hand side here we also have a, a control body the german bsi the bundesamt für sicherheit in der informationstechnik which is an institute controlling the security and uh, describing what needs to be um, transmitted in clear or encoded text they have a technical uh, reference the 03109 um, I'd just like to mention at this stage, a typical German application. Let's have a look at the next slide. Why wireless MBUS? The wireless meter bus or the wireless MBUS is a dedicated and optimized tool for advanced meter reading AMR systems. Uh, it is a European standard which guarantees interoperability between different uh, manufacturers for the European market. Uh, it is already a common solution for meteorological networks within the EU. And don't confuse the meteorological with metrology, which is referring to the weather conditions. This is meteorological for metering and meter applications. It also offers different data rates from 2.4 kilobits per second up to 100 kilobits per second on various radio frequencies. Let's have a look. The next slide is a short overview of the wireless Ember standards. And I've listed three of them here. Um, the standard EN 13757, the communication systems for meters, is basically or initially a, a a communication system for meters on the wired system and then specifically the 13757-4 is the wireless physical and link layer. So the wireless section is placed on top of the wired section. We have various other sections in between which uh, are these levels uh, dash 4, dash 5, dash 6 and critically or important for us the 13757 minus seven, which relates to the transport and security services. This once again relates more to the German wish requirement for uh, data encryption and security. Um, one more point here. This uh, wireless MBUS is maintained by the Technical Committee 294 as part of the European Committee for Standardization. No certification authority actually tests or grants wireless embassy compliance. So in the end of the day, it's some sort of gentleman's agreement uh, as what the compliance entails. Let's become a little bit more technical. What happens in the communication? In the field, we have many meters, which could be water, gas, electricity, or even heat cost meters. 
and in essence to keep them efficient and ideal for battery operation they would transmit the packages at regular intervals in one direction in a uni unidirectional fashion uh, we have here the so-called uplink meter to other now that is a standard fashion it is a system whereby we would transmit at regular intervals from a few seconds delay right up to hours of delay between these packages and they would do no no channel access or uh, assessment it would be simply a transmission irrespective of whether the channel is occupied or not meaning that in essence one or other package could be lost as well now that is ideal for battery consumption because we have very short efficient data packages however sometimes we have the requirement for bi-directional communication in other words, the gateway would want to talk back to the meter in order to either obtain some further information or for other reasons. And in this case, we would then have a so-called downlink. Now, this is only possible in a short window directly after an uplink message. So the uplink in certain cases would give us a short window of a few milliseconds to reply by the gateway and to start a done link communication. You'll see the two terms here, other and meter. Now the meter would always be the actual measuring device and other would be the other end or the top end, the back end, in this case, the gateway. Let's have a look at the next slide. Um, a short little summary of the different wireless Embus modes of operation than naming modes and let's have a look the left top the mode you'll see we have the stc and r modes um, they're under the n and f mode now the st and c and r modes are all based on the 868 megahertz frequency band s standing for stationary mode or s mode intended for unidirectional or bidirectional communication then we have the t mode which refers to the frequent transmit mode, which could also be in bi-directional fashion. Thereafter, the C mode, which seems to be the more popular nowadays, also known as the compact mode. This mode is similar to T mode, but allows for transmission of more data within the same energy budget with the same duty cycle. It also uses a different compression method, the NZR or return to zero uh, communication protocol right the compact mode then we have one more which is which one do i have which i've skipped uh, stc and r the n mode the n mode is a little bit different in that this is a so-called narrow band mode on 169 megahertz frequency band very often also used in france and in italy but more about that a little bit later on the N mode is also assigned to specific channels within the 169 megahertz band. And if you look on the right hand side at the bottom, we'll see A to G. So we'll have A to G different channels within the 169 megahertz band, the N mode only. Right, obviously I've skipped the last one on the left hand side, the F mode, which is a lesser known mode the frequent receive and transmit mode for the 433 megahertz frequency band also intended for somewhat long-range communication in a bi-directional mode we'd have the f2 minus m what else have i skipped here right at the bottom of this page in the screen there are some examples of the nomenclature which i'd like to just br uh, briefly point out a so-called S1 minus M would be the S mode, unidirectional uh, from meter. If we look a little bit further on, for instance, the T2 other would be the T mode, also on 868, bidirectional and therefore also from other. That would mean that the gateway could also communicate back to the meter. 
Right, those are some examples of the applications and the frequencies. What happens once we transmit a package? We have actually not have had a look at the detail of the package, but the package in these different wireless embus modes obviously take different durations of transmission. You'll see that on the left-hand side, we have the N2C and D, the F2 and R2, which for a package as we've used it here, with a common constant frame size of about 54 byte, would in the N2C mode entail around about 208 milliseconds. It would get less and less for the same package with a C other to meter, the T meter to other, or the C meter to other, being the most efficient and being down to a five millisecond package. Now, the shorter the package, the better the energy consumption and the more ideal this would be suited for battery operation, which invariably very often is the case with most of these meters we have out in the field, except maybe the power meters, the electricity meters, which obviously sometimes tend to have the power available. Right, let's have a look. What else? Right, unified Europe with a question mark. I've put this in for a specific purpose. Basically, the EN13757 and the 13757-4 is actually very much European for the European market because it's based on the 868 megahertz SRD band, which is license free. Um, other countries have different rules. The USA normally works on 915, so this is not applicable for the US. So it's typically typical Europe. Also the 169 and 434 frequency uh, being built into the wireless MBUS modes. All of this is based on the OMS group proposal. Now this is an interest group trying to define all of these uh, transmission protocols for the European market, the OMS group. There are some exceptions to the rule, however, and the French, for example, for the gas distribution, have implemented the 13757 with the N mode on the 169 megahertz and the narrowband simply to get a somewhat better range and a better penetration of the signal. And Italy, with CRG, the Italian Gas Committee, have also modified this a little bit with the UNI TS, the technical spec 11291, for their own applications, also on the N mode 169 megahertz narrow band. Um, maybe one last comment on the left hand side, based on the OMS group. The AMS group defines the actual content, the data content, the package structure, and the transmission frequency, how often a data package is transmitted. Let's have a look and see the next slide. Um, one or two ideas and thoughts about the OMS group. And we as a company are actually member of the AMS as well. And we also serve on the AG1, the Arbeitsgruppe 1, which is the working group or task group one, which defines and manages and controls these regulations as defined by the OMS. Let's sum up, it integrates all media, gas, electricity, heat and water, including some submitting systems into one manufacturer independent system, which means that many manufacturers would all be able to communicate to the same top end or gateway. It is based on the 13757 and more specifically then also refined for the 13757-4, the wireless MBUS. The IMS certification tests and ensures interoperability. There is one more slide to this topic. The IMS also spy, uh, specifies tighter rules for communication timing, frame content, and structure, as I mentioned earlier on already. The AMS standard and relating documents are free of charge, whereas the 
13757 and the related documents are actually not free of charge. They do come at a small charge, but are available from the various uh, controlling bodies uh, and mainly or specifically in English, but are also available in a number of, uh, do a bit of searching. Right, the AMS standard and relating documents are free of charge. I've mentioned the OMS certification currently covers some specific meter types, which is water, gas, and electricity, but it could also be used or implemented for other exotic types or specific types, such as humidity and temperature. An important point I'd like to point out here is the Annex N of the OMS specification. This includes example frames and use cases. Now, when whoever is interested in the wireless MBUS, I can only re recommend using the Annex N because it gives some good examples of what actually needs to be the content of such a message or data package, which can be either received from a meter or transmitted back. So a very useful document but I'll give you a little bit more information later on. The last point here, the IMS also defines the security profiles. Now security obviously being very important, especially on the German market. Let's get a little bit more technical. I've spoken a bit about the IMS. The IMS specifies a number of security profiles um, and you'll see in this graph here on the left-hand side, the profiles A, B, or C, the top line obviously being, so it's irrelevant, no encryption, no authentication, and therefore no key. But the easiest and simplest of encryption would then be the mode five, profile A, which is an AES-128 CBC encryption. The AES standing for Advanced Encryption System using 128 bits persistent symmetric key. Thereafter, a little bit more complex would be the mode seven, which is also then relevant for message authentication. In other words, here applied uh, or implemented and checked by the CMAC or the Cypher message authentication code. It uses a 128 bit ephemeral symmetric key. Right, and then we have the third option near the mode C, which is mode 13. The TLS, which is the so-called transport layer security system, TLS 1.2, which comes from the internet. Now the internet uses a so-called SSL, a secure socket layer, and this has been modified to be implemented here as a transport layer security. It becomes very complex, uh, uses both HMAC and CMAC, and I'm not going to go more into detail. This is still preliminary, pre very much preliminary. We'll have to see what the future holds and how this can actually be implemented in the future. My impression is that with this, maybe we have aimed a little bit high, but who knows. Nevertheless, let's have a look at the next slide. What does the wireless MBUS uh, model or layer model look like? You'll see uh, the left at the top, it says use of interleaved layers. Now the wireless MBUS layer is based on the so-called Aussie layered model or the Aussie model, the OSI model, which hierarchically lists the different layers one above the other, starting at the bottom, which is a physical layer, and right above that, the data link layer. Now, these are the two layers which we have combined in our wireless Ember stack on our modules. And then above that, obviously, you'd have the extended link layer, the authentication and fragmentation layer, transport layer, and application layer. Now, this might sound a little bit complex at this stage. Uh, the next one or two slides will throw some light on it. The minimalistic frame only has the physical and DLL layers, which in essence would be one block of at least 10 bytes. So that's a very minimal 
uh, layout of such a data package. And on top of that, you could then add the TPL, AFL, and ELL, which is introduced each time by a new byte called the CI field or the control information field. Once again, a little bit more. Uh, maybe one comment, our wireless Ember stack here is it requires transparent data tr transmission. It is universally applicable and the data has to be submitted to the module uh, according to the rules of the 13757-3 via UART. More about that shortly. Right, we have here a slide on the application layer. Um, it can contain either none, one or multiple of data records. Uh, now this is the actual data which are received from my meter, which would be in liters or watts or whatever the, the actual measurement would be. Data records are coded according to the EN 13757-3 and require passing to extract human readable results. Now the term passing would be known by the programmers. That is the rule which defines how to package this metered or measured value into a hex string ready for transmission by a module, or then at the other end, the depassing or unpassing, extracting the readable data once again. Let's look at the bottom here. We have the data record header, which consists at least of a data information block, just above it, and the value information block. Now, the data information block would be above that on the left, the DIF or DIF, data information field of one byte, a possible extension to this, as well as the value information field with a possible extension, and thereafter, the actual data. Now, if I have confused you with the diff and the woof, let's have a look at the next slide. Right, that might look a little bit more interesting, more relevant. Here we have a meter, could be any type of meter, which gives us 12 digits, in this case, a 12 digit water meter. And we'll have the value of 10,672 cubic meters and 931 liters. Now, how do we encode this? The APL of our previous slide, if you remember the DIB, the data information field and the value information field would be encoded as follows. The DIB in this case would consist of a hex zero E, which tells me that this whole 12 digit value consists of 12 digits binary coded decimal. The programmers will know there's a, speci a specific type of packaging or coding. The second field would tell me with a hex 1-3 that this would be 10 to the minus three cubic meters. In other words, one liter per digit. And then the data would actually follow. Now you'll see that the least significant byte, which is the 31, would be transmitted first followed by the successive higher bytes right through to the zero zero, the most significant byte at the end. How is all of this packaged in a telegram, into a telegram? I've included this next package here to show you um, what a telegram could look like. Before we look at the beautiful colored example on the right hand side. This is an application for a humidity and temperature sensor. It actually is a unidirectional sensor and we use the encryption mode five. Now I think this graph here is very interesting and clearly defines what is relevant. The column under bytes, right in the middle, bytes starting with one E this whole column would actually then be the data which I would package into my uh, so-called IMS data package to be sent to my RF module for transmission. I'm starting right at the top. The first field, it's called the L field, 
defines the length of this whole package, which would be 30 bytes. Now, for those of you who have counted from top to bottom, you don't need to count. The column on the right in the gray, which says byte index starting from zero down to 30, actually gives you the total. So you don't need to count. The notes on the right explain the positions. I'll point out some of these in more detail. The second one is a C field, also important, which is the uh, command field, which tells us that this meter sends and has no reply. So it's a unidirectional meter. Then we have the manufacturer code. This is or should be a unique code. Obviously, here we would have, if I read on the right-hand side, the manufacturer being A and B. Now, this code has been registered with the UK Flags Association, and any producer of a meter would have to reg register in order to have his name registered, and he could enter this code in this package so that every package being transmitted is identified by the manufacturer. But also following the, the next four bytes is the serial number of the device, et cetera, et cetera. Right, that would be the data link layer, the turquoise or the blue section. Following on top of that is the transport layer, starting with a CI field, which I've mentioned earlier on, which is 7A in this case, a short header. Um, I'm going to skip down. Check in the middle of the green field, there are two fields, the configuration fields. This is also important and interesting. We've mentioned encryption and mode 5. Now, the first field of the config, the 1, 0, and hex, tells me that this is encrypted, the message. In other words, the data in the orange section, application layer, which is my critical data, needs to be encrypted. And it is encrypted by the mode 5 encryption. The second config field, 0, 5 hex, tells me this is mode 5 encryption, etc. We have from there downwards uh, two positions filled with 2F. This is an idle filler. And right at the bottom, the last six or seven positions are also 2Fs. Now, you'd ask me, why would I have 2F? Simply because for encryption, the AES-128 encryption, we need at least 16 bytes. And in order to have 16 bytes of data, we fill this at the bottom with 2F values. Right, the first one of the orange would be DR1, the diff, we mentioned that previously, and the width, the value information field in this case, temperature and in degrees Celsius. Then the actual values with LSB and MSB. And we have a second different width for the values here, which would be the relative humidity in percentage. Right, now I've summed up, and I think if this is not clear to you now, uh, if it's totally confusing, then I suggest reading some further documentation. Alternatively, you could simply ignore all of the theory and have a look at our homepage and our wireless Embus products. We have some modules which do this job nicely for you. On the 868, we have two modules, which is the AMB 8426-M and the 8626-M, as well as the AMB 3626-M, which is for the 169 megahertz frequency band. These modules are embedded low-cost wireless Embus radio modules. Um, the integrated protocol stack controls the entire RF data communication according to EN13757-4. Right. The control is handled by the module. All you need to do is interface via UART, send this hex string as we've seen on the previous string a previous screen uh, to this module, and the module would take care of the rest. The receiving end of this module would do the same part and would unpass the received package into a readable form. On top of this, we also have the so-called USB sticks, which is a module 
with USB interfacing. Very interesting and suitable for engineers and technicians to test and operate and take into operation very quickly, as well as some evaluation kits, which we also have available. I think we've just about done. There are one or two more slides. Yes, here's an interesting one. We have an IT2 tool for monitoring, monitoring and analysis. IT um, analysis or analysis tool to, for the monitoring. Now, this is a tool which can read the IMS 4.1.2 packages and pass or unpass these packages to make them readable in clear form for any person to read. Now, in this package, obviously, we'll display the manufacturer, the serial number, some technical data, as well as the actual meter content, and right at the end, also the RSSI of the respective package received. The RSSI being the signal strength as it's been received. An excellent tool for analysis of wireless omnis packages. We handle the ST and C modes at this stage for 169. We don't have a solution included in this package. Um, supports data records according to the EN 13757-3 of, of 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, I think one more slide to come. What could we expect to happen in the future? What else would come up? There are possible a, mu uh, a few more security profiles which could come up. In the worst case, each country could have its own profile for each country. Uh, the IMS is active and we always need to look at legislation and changes in this wireless MBUS field. We might be confronted with new physical layers, upcoming IC improvements, radio technology which might change, as well as new frequency bands which could be assigned. Then we have the possibility of reduced power consumption, possibly related to new ICs or other physical layer improvements. Um, new applications uh, or requirements to applications, new protocols or extensions of existing ones, and then also new national governments may lead to changes. Um, I think of the Brexit or possibly other changes which could play a role. So the life, the wireless MBUS stays very dynamic and lively. They could always happen interesting things in the future. We, however, would like to, at this stage then, I think sum up at this point. I have one more slide, which is to thank you for your attention at this stage. In the meantime, I have actually browsed towards the right-hand side here for the actual control and see what control and the support in the back is doing. Do we have any questions which have come in in the meantime? Yes, here could be one. Oh, yes, I quickly have to read through. Um, yeah, which languages are the EN13757 or IMS in? I think I've touched on that. The main language is obviously in English, but there are translations in most of the European languages, um, especially German, French, Italian. And these OMS documents are only available in English. The AMS documents are available in English. There could be one more question. Let me browse through here. Yes, a question here. Can I get free samples? Well, huh, yes, we'd have to talk to our field sales engineers. In essence, this being a high quality project, we don't really have free samples. Um, it is not possible at this stage, simply due to the complexity and the cost of a single product. I see one more question, which is just scrolled up here. Yeah, oh yes, okay, what about repeaters? Is it possible to enhance the range of meters? Um, yes, in essence, uh, it is possible, repeating is possible. The OMS standard actually has introduced 
a cell called hop counter in each conform frame. And this allows us to control and indicate in a message whether it has been repeated before or not. And this can be used by so-called single hop repeaters. Once a package is received, this one bit would be toggled or set. And the next repeater, if in range, would then know this package has been repeated. I am not allowed to repeat it once more because that entails the danger of uh, back and forth transmission. Um, yeah, the AMS gives some details on single hop unidirectional repeating. However, be aware that the duty cycle rules of the RED in Europe must be followed. Have a look. Uh, usually it's 1% for the S mode and even down to 0.1% for the C and T mode, which implies that the maximum transmission duration is 36 seconds per hour in the first case and only 3.6 seconds sending time per hour for the C and uh, R modes. Right, take care, be aware that there is something like the duty cycle. Nevertheless, this is invariably quite sufficient for most meter applications. At this stage, I do not see any further questions here. How are we doing for time? We are just close on three quarters of an hour, 45 minutes. If there are no further questions coming in, Yes, I don't see any further questions at this stage. We will certainly be online, try and answer your questions and be of support. Otherwise, simply send us an email, drop us a line. And if you'd like to refer back to any of the previous slides, have a look at our internal YouTube channel. This should be available shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, as far as I'm concerned at this stage, I thank you very much for your attention. It was fun. We'll hope to stay in contact and I'll hear from you again next time. Until then, thanks a lot to our management, our control and people at the back and for all of you for your listening this afternoon. Keep well and good day.